What do Netflix, Disney+, Max, Hulu all have in common? They're all greedy bastards who don't want to pay their writers and actors residuals. Greedy bastards. Gone are the days of when we almost had everything on one platform. Netflix truly had an oasis and was almost perfect. Had a really nice UI system. It actually had reviews at the time. There were no cancellations of favorite TV shows and they had a huge catalog of licensed shows from studios. But now we're seeing price hikes like never before, password sharing restrictions, shitty UI that hasn't been fixed. I'm looking at you, Hulu. And the overwhelming amount of streaming platforms being offered to us as the consumer, which may not be a bad thing, but at the same time, it's too much. And lately I've just been thinking about it. How did we get here? And what the fuck happened to streaming services? Now, for me, streaming has become a plethora of content garbage, sprinkled in with a little bit of hidden gems of great TV shows and movies. This leaves us to choose through libraries and libraries of content that we may not need to watch. And hey, look, we've all been there. I've indulged in some guilty pleasure content. I mean, who hasn't to pass the time? Or with the expansion of studio IPs such as the MCU and Star Wars shows that have become a little bit too much and now I'm becoming fatigued, but more on that later. Let's go back to 2007, where Netflix's early days of streaming, where you could go to the once called Internet Explorer and stream about 10 whole hours per month of a library of a thousand movies to watch online. But honestly, no one used that shit. As time went on in the mid 2010s, Netflix's services became way more accessible and they started to rival traditional network TV with their own original content like House of Cards, if you remember, or Orange is the New Black. And they had a huge catalog of movies and shows that were licensed to them from other studios. Remember, The Office, you could stream whenever you wanted, Friends, you could stream whenever you wanted, you could stream the Avengers movies. I mean, this is why streaming was such a big appeal for everybody. And it was a simpler time. And then, this happened. The dawn of the streaming wars. The year is 2019, and we saw major Hollywood studios take their original shows and movies off of streaming giants such as Netflix. But did this actually work? Which brought us here today, to the cesspool of many streaming platforms that we know today. We have Disney Plus Max, which was once known HBO Max, Prime Video, Apple TV, Peacock, Paramount Plus, Voodoo, there's just so many. Sometimes we don't even know which ones we're paying for because there are so many that we opted into and maybe we forgot which content is streaming on which because sometimes I forget which hit show or which movie is being streamed to which platform. Which, which? I have to search it up into Google every single time. It's annoying. The amount of Hollywood studio streaming platforms are starting to show who will be left for dead and who will actually be profitable in the near future. And you'd think, with enough competition within an industry, the prices would actually go down. Wrong. Ever since the pandemic, the movie industry has been impacted greatly, and the streaming platforms were just the catalyst of it. Let me take you back to your lazy days of quarantine time. Yes, the work from home days for about those three months while everything was going to shit. The movie theaters were closed, pretty much everything was closed. So streaming platforms saw this as the golden ticket opportunity to keep us entertained at home. And look, it made us happy. It got rid of a lot of our problems because 2020 was probably the longest year of our lives. It worked for a while, but even for us, it wasn't enough to keep us at home. Even though they were trying to pump out so much content for us, it wasn't enough because we got fatigue. MCU and Star Wars, <clears throat> sorry, I had <clears throat> something in my throat. Even though movie theaters have, yes, they have started to pick up the slack and survive after what the pandemic caused, they're still going to need to innovate in order to get people into their seats and out of the house to watch movies without the comfort of being in their own home. And streaming has caused a huge ripple in the movie industry where movie studios are starting to turn their heads in the opposite direction to mid-budget movies. 
we don't get to see those anymore. They're mainly just straight to streaming services. Some of these movies aren't even considered to be pushed as a theatrical release, rather left as just an original to be on some streaming service and be made money there. This has led to a lot of movies being pushed to be released onto a streaming platform a month after its release in theaters. Notably, Asteroid City was one of them, which was released this past June, but then two weeks after, it was released on Peacock in July. Now that's crazy. But yes, it was going up against Across the Spider-Verse and other big blockbuster releases. But there's still hope for the film industry. As we saw the internet smash hit movie duo, Barbenheimer. Honestly, this was probably the best thing to happen to the movie industry because it caused a massive influx of people just hyping up this duo event being released on the same day. Taking advantage of both of the marketing teams, I'm pretty sure Barbie took way more advantage of this because their marketing budget was huge and the fans were in the seats. I couldn't even get a ticket to Oppenheimer. I did see Barbie. Barbie was amazing. It was a great, great movie. For Oppenheimer, I really wanted to see it in IMAX because it's Nolan. You can't watch his movies without being in an IMAX theater. And the closest IMAX theater to me was in Irvine, California. There were no tickets in the middle rows where you could see it and watch it perfectly. I don't want to see Killian Murphy's big fat juicy lips looking down on me and me looking straight up, breaking my neck just to watch his film. No, I wanted to be comfortable. This is something that they should be looking towards to. I'm talking about the movie theaters. Not try to just emulate it again because this is just a once in a lifetime kind of thing and it's organic. Maybe these events should be something worth looking into to rival the streaming services that are taking over the conveniency of movie theaters. Okay, I digress, but theaters have a lot of competition to go up against because streaming is the future of home entertainment. It's really nice to know that even if we miss the movie in the theaters when spending, you know, 20 to $30 per ticket, you could save a few bucks and you can stream it within the comfort of your own home. Now, even though a lot of major studios have launched their own streaming platforms, doesn't mean that they have been successful. They have suffered in the investment of this and getting their money back because Netflix, of course, has gained earnings where the others have lost billions of dollars. Since the name of the game is to mainly get subscribers and by making original content for that specific platform, this has cost a lot of money for them. The money, Skylar, where is the rest? Now this is starting to make sense why the studios are looking towards strategizing profitability. Notably, with the recent HBO Max merger with Discovery Plus, or AKA Warner Brothers Discovery. This was a huge shakeup within the streaming industry in particular. Along with this merger deal, it led to the demise of a lot of their original shows, either being snapped by Thanos or completely being canceled after running a full first season. Imagine watching a brand new show that you freaking loved and then all of a sudden it's just gone. You can't even rewatch it. Cancellation is one thing, but being annihilated off of the platform is insane to me. Hell, even Batgirl was shelved. That was already done, spent on $90 million down the drain. Because of the decision made by Warner Brothers Discovery, this has raised many eyebrows throughout the streaming platforms to also maybe cut down on their content. What? We've seen some success with the recent releases of the MCU being expanded onto Disney+, Plus, but some have may felt the fatigue. Have you felt the fatigue? Because... I certainly have, because my goodness, I could not watch Quantumanium for my life. I tried watching it on the plane, I couldn't bring myself to it, I don't know why. Bob Iger recently even stated that they're going to start slowing down the releasing of these IPs and focus more on the quality of them, aka we want to save money and we're just going to slow down the content. That's it. We've known now for over a hundred days the writers and actors have been striking just to get a fair enough deal to get back to work. This means that the streaming services such as Netflix and Disney Plus who haven't even made a fair enough deal to the writers and actors guilds, they are bleeding money day by day, second by second. Sad reality is, is that they are hoarding a lot of the rewards rather than sharing at least some of the wealth with the people who actually made the content. This is where I have to put my foot down. 
I'm looking at you, Bob Iger. That's, that's not it. The boom of AI has Hollywood in a sweat. Everyone is trying to get into the innovation that AI has brought to us. We have people who are innovating the technology to make it better, maybe work easier for a lot of work processes and in other industries and make it more streamlined. That's great and all. But at the same time, we're also jeopardizing the jobs in Hollywood. Real humans versus a robot. Real humans who have been writing for thousands and thousands of years. However, companies like Netflix are seeking AI solutions to replace actual writers for their shows and possibly more. Who knows? It was reported recently that Netflix put out a job offer for 900K for a product manager position in the AI machine learning space. This position could be meant for creating a better quality of life on Netflix's platform. If the user experience is going to be way better and it'll recommend us better shows and movies to watch, then sign me up. That doesn't hinder the fact that they're still willing to experiment with and even considering having this within the writer's room. And as of right now, it is the wild, wild west, my friends, for AI technology in Hollywood. There are no regulations against it, no restrictions against it. These are big streaming corporations that on a daily have enough subscribers enough watch time to fund all of the writers and actors who are still on strike today and help them make better content. This has been such a divisive topic that it has hindered what the streaming platforms stand for and what their values are. What sounded like a perfect paradise for what streaming used to be and what it was meant to be, let's all think again. We're going backwards. As the introduction of more plan options and subscription options are becoming available, maybe to save you a pretty penny, are offering ad options. This defeats the whole purpose of what streaming was based off of. No ads. And you may be right. We are only spending our money on a few platforms rather than spending on all of the platforms that will add up to basically a cable package, but it doesn't negate what the future holds because with all these price hikes, expect to see more in the future. And we are able to save a pretty penny with sharing our passwords for certain platforms with other people, but password sharing restrictions are going to become more and more of a problem for us. I sadly had to say goodbye to my mom's Netflix account Aww. because I could not get on it. Even if I asked for the code to get in, maybe we'll get in for a couple days, but then it would come back and say, are you sure this is the right Netflix account? Are you, are you streaming from somewhere else? Maybe, maybe you should sign up and create a new account. Now, since Netflix led the charge, everyone is gonna follow suit, of course. Disney has put out a statement recently, this past August, that they're gonna start cracking down on their password sharing. I hate to break it to you, family and friends, but 2024 is gonna be the password restriction year. Maybe piracy might be the way to go. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of other streaming platforms that you can stream for free, like Roku, Crackle, and many others. In a time where there are unstable markets, it is impossible for these platforms to forecast their future, and it is becoming increasingly unprofitable for them. Prime Video has already started to license their content out to other media companies. Disney is even looking into this because hoarding their original content onto one platform wasn't the smartest move. Sony Pictures Motion Pictures Group, that is a really long name, has just continued to license their content onto different media platforms and it's kept them profitable. We're likely gonna see a lot of these streaming platforms come acquired by one of the big studios, as we saw with Warner Brothers Discovery. A lot of these platforms we see today may not be here in a couple years. Hopefully in the future, we could see a platform that just has everything. For a premium price, yes, that's probably what's going to happen, but if it makes it easier for us to watch our favorite movies and shows, then I would take that over anything. If you made it to the end, I really hope you enjoyed listening to me and just rant about what happened to streaming services as a whole. If I miss anything, let me know. Consider hitting the like button. It'll help this video immensely and my channel to be seen by other people. That would be much appreciated. Thank you again so much for watching. I have a lot more content that I really want to share with you all. And if you like this style of video, let me know. I'll create more of it. But in the meantime, see you in the next one.